Greetings, you beautiful humans. This is your friendly neighborhood life coach, Glenn Klein, with episode 17, the finale of the story of a t-shirt uh, t-shirt cult, <laughs> maybe a t-shirt quilt. We're going to be talking about Deadwood today. And I have two Deadwood t-shirts, one I have on my body, and one needed to be part of the quilt. And I will explain to you in detail why Deadwood is, in my opinion, the greatest television show that ever has been. TV has had a big part of my life, as most people. I grew up in a TV generation. That's when there were only five channels. There was ABC, NBC, in Chicago was that. Channel 5, NBC, Channel 7, ABC, Channel 2, CBS, Channel 11, PBS, and then WGN, Channel 9. That was it. And then eventually Channel 32, and then here we are with, with everything, with all the different TV options. I still think Deadwood is the greatest television show that ever walked the face of the earth, that lived. I also purposely, on purpose, with a purpose, wore my White Sox hat. Here we go, Chicago White Sox. As you guys know by now, I am a huge fan of the Cubs. Cubs. Cubs over here. Cubs over here. I'm a Northside fan. That's how I grew up. I'm a, I'm a Cubs fan. But I'm also not a hater. When the White Sox won their World Series in 2005, I was the Cubs weren't in it. Just like we talked about earlier about me not wanting to hate on the Packers just because Jacob decided to be a Packer fan. And then we all cheered for the Bucks. My people are happy. I'm Kirstie Corelling the moment, or I'm having compersion. I'm happy. I don't want my people, that my friends, my family, to be anything but happy. And so I'm cheering for the White Sox as long as it doesn't affect the Cubs. And right now, I mean, it's early on in the baseball season, and baseball is fun, and life is baseball, and baseball is life. We'll see what happens. But the presumption is that the Cubs are going to struggle this year, and the White Sox have a very good team. And then, of course, I got my raise. So we got all this uh, component potential for conflict. When the Lightning played the Blackhawks in the Stanley Cup final, I the Blackhawks had won two Stanley Cups recently. I was thrilled. I was cheering for them. I was so happy. But then when they played the Lightning in 2015, I was I had to follow my heart. Who am I? Who would I want? And I decided I wanted the Lightning to win. I announced it on social media, and oh my God, people did not have compersion for me in Chicago. They all called me a traitor and all kinds of bad names. When I didn't take the party line with <laughs> early wake-up call, how a coach's early warnings about the pandemic can help you now, they were vicious on me. I'm not a hater. And you can grow into not being a hater. If you're a hater, you don't want to be a hater, give me a buzz. We'll, I'll, we'll figure it out together. But I love when my people do well. It's compersion. It's a word. It's a new word. It's the opposite of jealousy. And so I wore, for the last episode, a White Sox hat and my Deadwood shirt because we're going to talk about the greatest television show that ever was. So we had just like four or five TV channels. And everybody was watching things like the Ed Sullivan show when the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan in the 1960s. Everybody was watching the similar shows and watching the transition of America and the sexual revolution, and Watergate, and the Vietnam War, and all that stuff. Martin Luther King and Robert F. Kennedy getting assassination. John Kennedy getting assassination first, or assassinated first in 1963. So television has been a huge part of my life. i become a broadcaster, and I'm a communicator. I'm a branding guy. And so this show shows up on HBO called Deadwood. And remember, we, when we talked about Sex and the Pews, we talked about my spiritual perspective. And the bottom line is this is that as far as the creator of the universe is concerned, what we discovered was there is no more law. There's no more Ten Commandments, not as far as God is concerned. And we also know that there were not just Ten Commandments or Ten Laws given to Israel. There were 613. And any of them, if you violated, could end up with a death penalty. Well, the guy that started Deadwood that created was a guy is a guy named David Milch, absolute genius, and the show is based on the founding of Deadwood, South Dakota. Now, this is there's real people in this uh, the show, people that are portrayed uh, as actual characters from the founding of Deadwood, like Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane and Al Swearingen and others, Charlie Utter. Seth Bullock, Sal Starr, these are all main characters in the show. And 
the show really isn't about the founding of Deadwood, South Dakota, although it is. It is about what happens when you have a place where there's no law. Because Deadwood, when Deadwood was founded in 1876, it was in no man's land. It was a lawless town. It wasn't in the United States territory. It was on Indian land that had not been yet negotiated with the Sioux over there, where the, the Crazy Horse uh, Monument is now. And also Mount Rushmore is right there. It's really about what happens to human beings when there's no law. Where do we make the decision? Are we haters or are we reconcilers? And ultimately, it Milch takes profanity to a art form. It's been called Shakespearean or Elizabethan, the way that he uses swear words. And it's true. It's You've got to be an active participant in Deadwood. My son Isaac loves Deadwood, but he watches it with the closed captioning because it's happening so fast and the words are so profound and so profane and you're not sure exactly what's going on. I There were 36 episodes of Deadwood. Three seasons, 12 episodes a season, and then they just stopped because it was so expensive. Milch was, it was costing millions an episode. He had like 140 extras and animals and they had a whole town, they had built Deadwood. And so they just stopped it after three seasons and there was never a finish to it. And forever, the rumor was that Deadwood is going to come out with a closing movie. And we just would, our hopes would get up, and then they would be dashed. I really am so enthralled with this show. Obviously, fortunately, this thing called Facebook started right around the time that Deadwood finished as a series, about 2007. And then somebody started a Deadwood Facebook group. And I found out that there are tens of thousands of people that were nut jobs like me about this show. It really helped me. And I'm a, to this day, I'm a big participant. And there's now three Deadwood fan pages that I'm a part of. But we would, our hopes would be raised that they were going to do a movie. And then Dash. And then they would be raised. And then they would be Dash. And then 13 years. This is how great the show is. 13 years after the show just stopped after season three, they did a movie on HBO called Deadwood, the movie, and they tied up all these loose ends. And here's basically what, and you should, you can watch just the movie. You should watch the series with captioning, <laughs> but here you can watch the movie and, and just really get a lot out of the movie. But what happens is, is that of course the law eventually comes in and then the, the people that have a higher priority than just their self-interest than just their own self-aggrandizement and things like that. They, they form unlikely uh, alliances. And But here's the ultimate thing. Because it's a town without law, with no religion, if you will, that the women are elevated. It's about, it's about female empowerment. Deadwood. It's incredible, you guys. The, the show is violent. It's funny. It's profane. It's profound. I cannot recommend that show enough. And I did all of this, the, the series, and I promote Deadwood because it's in my heart to do. It was in people's hearts to go to Deadwood. It was a gold rush town. It was in people's hearts to join the United States and to form a, a town that had no laws. And they eventually become part of the United States, Southwood, uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. You can go there today. It's, it's there. They, Deadwood, the show, had a tremendous impact on the city of Deadwood, South Dakota. You can imagine what it did. Watch the movie. You'll be really touched and, and, and inspired. I've watched the 36 episodes each, probably 100 times each. It's like the, it's the backdrop of my life. I'll put it on before I fall asleep. It's like listening to a great concerto or a rock and roll song that you love or some jazz. You can hear it over and over again and you hear new things, different nuances all the time. But I followed my heart in doing the story of the quilt. I followed my heart into Deadwood. I'm promoting Deadwood by following my heart. I started Sex in the Pews by following my heart. I moved to Wisconsin to do the radio show that I got fired from uh, to follow my heart. And people say, you can never go wrong following your heart. And people say, Glenn, what if your heart takes you down a wrong path. Well, if your heart uh, has the power to take you down a wrong path, I'm not talking morally wrong, just an ineffective, unproductive, not profitable path, it kind of proves it has 
the power to straighten out that path for you, doesn't it? Follow your heart. In here, your heart is perfection and righteousness. This is why I refer to all you and everybody as beautiful humans, because we're all beautiful on the inside. The key that I found in this little thing we call life is producing what's inside, outside. And that's what I do. And that's I would be, love to be able to help you in your process. Give me a buzz. My cell number is 813-363-9545. The website with all the Coaching Corner blogs is Klein.coach. Or you can email me anytime at grow at Coach Glenn Klein. I want to thank my boy Alex Irvin for helping uh, do these productions. Thank you for watching. And uh, this is Glenn Klein saying, Shalom, everybody!